Hey guys, it's Bailey from Making Up the Midwest, and today I have for you a review of some of the new products CoverGirl has been coming out with. I recently Instagrammed a picture of the display and some of the things that I picked up, and you guys asked for a video review. So here I am, here we are, let's get to it. First off, I'm holding the new Clean Whipped Cream Foundation, but this is not actually going to be in this review because I did a separate review on it. It deserved its own because it's a full-on foundation. So I will put something somewhere in here for you to go click that if you're interested or check the, the info bar for a link to that if you want to watch it later. But that is up and it won't be included in this video. What I do have for you today, however, are the brand new single eyeshadows here that I'm holding, these two guys. And then I have four of the new shadow pencils, or what are they called? They are called the flamed out, yeah, shadow pencils. Um, so that is what I have to review for you today. You can see I have an assortment of colors here. So if you want to see what I think of these, please continue watching. Then let's start with the shadow pots. These don't have names, unfortunately. That's kind of a bummer because who doesn't love reading the fun, witty names that brands can come up with? This is just 325, which is a pale teal, I would say, with uh, slight, well, no, definitive silver shimmer. And then the other is 315, which is kind of a cobalt blue also with silver shimmer. Now these are very different than the typical formula you will find in regular CoverGirl quads. These have a little bit more texture to them. They, um, they're kind of gritty to the touch. And at first when I swatched them, I did not like them at all because they were so rough and a lot of pigment would come off on my fingers and then when I go to put it down, not a lot showed up and so this didn't seem like they had good good color payoff. But when I went to use them on my lids, like put them to use as the eyeshadow that they are, I found that the color payoff was much better. In fact, better than the actual, this quad, and I keep holding this one up because after I got these home, I noticed that these two shadows are very similar to those in this, the Tropical Fusion, that's what this is called? Mm. Yes, this quad is called Tropical Fusion, and you'll notice that this is awfully similar to that. There are slight differences, and I'll flash some comparison swatches up here because I took them. And then there's this one here. Now this is more a deep, deeper blue-green, and this one is not so much, but they are very similar, and so it was kind of nice to see, uh, to compare formulas and shades a little bit. So, for one, this doesn't have nearly the color payoff that these do, but this is much smoother than these are. It's kind of hard to describe. Either way, I am not a super fan of these, just because, to me, when you buy something, and these were $4.39 for a single pot of eyeshadow, um, you kind of expect it to be like the best it can be because it's not like you're trying to spread out quality amongst five other shadows in a quad. This is the one thing you have to worry about in this pot and it just wasn't stellar. I was not impressed. Also this blue I have on my outer corner and it does, it is a very nice and deep blue shade, but it's hard to get as vibrant as it is in the pot. You look at it here and you think, oh my gosh, that's going to be a beautiful blue on the lid, and it's it's not actually. It just kind of turns into this muddy, blackened business, which is nice, and it gets very deep and very pigmented, but it's not quite this vibrant, which is what I expected from a line as colorful as this one. Overall, though, I'm going to have to say that these shadow pots, and these two in particular, obviously, because I haven't tried the rest, I wouldn't repurchase again given the chance because like I said 439 for one shadow and they weren't they didn't just blow me out of the water is kind of I don't know not ideal all right, now let's talk about the flamed out shadow pencils. I am a huge fan of jumbo eye pencils. I just love them. I think they're great multitaskers. And so I was eager to try a lot from this line. Granted, these are four, but this this line has a huge color spectrum, so I thought I would try some from the neutral end and some from the colorful end. As it turns out, I am really glad I did because there are some quality and texture inconsistencies that I want to talk about. So let's first start off with these. Now, right off the bat, these cost $6.59 per pencil. So uh, here I have $3.50. Again, no like name names. $3.50 is a light taupe, a light shimmery taupe. And $3.35 is a light olive with kind of slightly chunkier silver glitter. Now when I first swatched these, I was really unimpressed with how dry they were. They were just really dry. They were hard to swatch at first and I thought, well maybe it's because they're brand new and they need, you know, to be warmed up a little bit by 
your your natural body heat but that just wasn't the case they weren't warming up they weren't becoming smooth or creamy and they stayed that way even when I applied them to my eye and that's you know having something that you have to press down and tug and you don't want that around your eye no none of that repeated motion around your eye area so for that these were just total duds for me Interestingly enough though, these two were brilliant. I mean, right off the bat, super creamy, super smooth, super opaque. This is a Bright Lime Green or number 315, and you can see it along with this, number 310, which is a kind of metallic bricky red. Both of them are right here, very bright and vibrant and smooth and, and long lasting. All of these are long lasting. The only difference is I you have to get these on your eyes first, um, but these are really, really great and well worth the money, I think. The colors are also really fun too, and don't let them scare you because you probably can't tell, but I'm actually wearing this one on my eyes right now. I use this as a color base to my eye look today. Now, before I explain what I'm wearing on my eyes, I wanna say I wouldn't recommend using these as like a sticky base, like a paint pot or an eye primer. That's really not what these are supposed to be, I think. They aren't very sticky, so I wouldn't, use them to make eyeshadow adhere to. I just use this as a color base, mainly because I wanted to see what kind of look I could create. But um, when I then tried to pair it with the products I have from this line, I realized that would be kind of difficult. So I actually use this as an eyeshadow base. And then I went in with uh, this, the teal, the light teal shadow pot all over my lid. And then in my outer corner, I have the bright blue. And so I guess that's just, first, you can see how they actually wear on my eye, but also you can see that this isn't a color you should be scared of because it really, while it's very, it can be very bold, obviously, you can also mute it down a lot with other shadows. That long-winded explanation aside, what you should take away from this is that there are definite inconsistencies in the shadow pencil line, so just be aware of that when you are purchasing because these are the only four I can speak for, and I can tell you that these neutrals are, eh, not so much, but these colorful ones are brilliant literally. The one thing about these is you shouldn't be terribly sad if you were excited about these colors and are upset to hear that they aren't any good because when I first swatched these I was instantly reminded of another shadow pencil that I tried probably months ago from the brand Styly Style and I thought of them because they're cooling. These, the CoverGirl shadow pencils are cooling to your skin when you put them on. They don't say they are, uh, but they in fact are, and it reminded me of them because the Styly Style pencils do, I mean, they're called It's a Breeze Cooling Gel Eyeshadow Pencils. And interestingly enough, I would love to have you look at how <laughs> similar these look. They're identical. I wouldn't be surprised if they came from the same manufacturer because these are from Styly Style, these are from CoverGirl, and they look exactly the same. So I love the Styly Style. They go on just as these two in particular are in the shade Star Bright and Aqua Forever and they go on just as smooth and creamy and have the great same great staying power as these two that I love from the line but in general the Styly Style cooling eye pencil um, the range of colors it stays pretty muted so what I would recommend to you if you want these muted shades from the CoverGirl line is not to buy them from here get them from Styly Style and you can get these either on their website at Sears.com maybe even in Sears stores themselves and re Red Cherry is that no Red Cherry is a lash Cherry Culture <laughs> you can buy them on Cherry Culture I think so like I said the shade range in these is a little more limited but if it means you can get shades like this but better quality, I would go, I would try that. I'd be more inclined to try that. Plus, I think these are a dollar cheaper. I think these are like $5.40 or $5.50, whereas these are six. 59. So I feel like I've just talked your ear off, but I really wanted to get in some of those important points because this is such a new and interesting and buzzed about line. So I hope that was helpful. Just to sum things up, wouldn't recommend these. Would totally recommend the brights from the shadow pencil line, but if you want the neutrals, I might go for the Styly Style over the CoverGirl, but that's just me. Please leave your opinions in the, or your experiences and opinions and all that in the comment section below because that's gonna help everyone out. And thank you so much for watching. Please be sure to subscribe if you haven't already, and I will see you in my next video. Bye.